second chapter, verses 22 through 32. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves for two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for, your, and for glory to your people, Israel. This morning from Luke 2, verse 33 through 40. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that would be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and his swords will pierce your own soul too. And there was a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Ashtar. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow for, to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and, sp and to speak with, about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of his Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of these words this morning. It's always a fun week. I, I've, I've noticed this. The week of Christmas, whether it comes at the beginning of the week or the end of the week, because there are things that always come. And right now, you're sitting in those pews relaxing out of the cold, into the warm church, but you still might be a little stressed. You might be a little worn out, maybe a little disappointed, and possibly still a little bit tired. There's usually a bit of traveling that goes on. I myself did that down to Texas and back in two days. It's a quick journey, but you're there with family. And so this morning, we talk about the family, Joseph, Mary, and the little infant child, Jesus. Now, needless to say, this is, this is a stressful time for Mary and for Joseph. They had to travel for the census. They had a child in a manger, and now they are traveling to present their child in the temple. They have traveled from Nazareth to Jerusalem to Bethlehem and now back to Jerusalem. All of this done on a donkey or by walking. There was no cars, no trains, no buses, no airplanes for any of this. Imagine how stressed you would be. This is not the easiest time of year for this family. But they did all of this because, one, it was the law of the Roman Empire to go and be counted. Two, it was the law of Moses to present your child to God 
in the temple. Mary and Joseph, good citizens, devoted to God and their religion. They are going to do everything that is asked of them. They are going to follow what they know that God is asking them to do. Because God is asking them to do it. Now I want you to imagine real quickly. Imagine this family of three. Joseph, Mary, infant baby Jesus. Walking into the temple. Imagine walking into our sanctuary this morning. After walking all the way from where they were, probably, more than probably tired, perhaps thirsty, dirty from all of the dust that they walked through, sweaty from the long journey that they had to make, and they walk into the temple. These two, devoted people, covered in dirt, walking into the temple to present their child to the Lord because this is what they were supposed to do. No matter what they went through, they still did what God asked them to do. And so now they are in the temple. And they are walking forward to present their sacrifices on the altar. And there, a man looks at this couple, this disheveled, dirty, sweaty couple, and he sees a child in their arms. And he jumps up, and he grabs this child, and he praises God for the child. Simeon. Simeon has been sitting, waiting for this moment for all of his life. He was a devout man, a good man, true to God, faithful. And the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It said that the Holy Spirit this morning guided Simeon to the temple because God had promised him that he would see the Messiah, that he would see the rejuvenation of his land and his people. And so he was waiting there for the promise that was given to him. And so you hear about this gentleman waiting his whole life. And I picture a rather elderly fellow sitting there, maybe constantly checking his watch, asking, all right, is it today? When? When? And he is guided to the temple. And there, day in, day out, he waited for the Messiah so that he could see the Messiah. And what does he see? He sees a couple, sweaty, covered in dirt, poor, tired, holding a baby. And he goes. And he takes that child. And he worships the child. He sees this couple with two turtle doves about to make the sacrifice because they can't afford the lamb that they are supposed that is supposed to be sacrificed at this time. You see, in the Torah, it gives a list of what is to be sacrificed. It's got two lists: one for those with money and one for those without. And Mary and Joseph fall on the without side. And so they offer two turtle doves to God for the thanks for their child. And Simeon sees this, and he doesn't care, because the Holy Spirit moved him to see the child for what he was to become, to become the Messiah, to become the one to rejuvenate the world, to bring glory to all people. And then we have Anna. Anna, yet another prophet that has been speaking with the Holy Spirit. Devout, a widow, never left the temple, waiting for her moment to see this child. 
day and night. She saw all sorts of people coming and going, rich, poor, and yet she waited. And it was the moment that she saw Mary and Joseph walking in, covered in dirt, covered in sweat. That is the moment that she began to praise God. That is the moment that she saw this child with those parents and went out into the world to tell everyone what she saw. To tell everyone about the child that is now in this world that is going to bring about the redemption of Jerusalem. Both people, advanced in age that have been hanging around the temple for almost all of their lives. Looking for the Messiah, waiting for this person to come that will save the world. And they chose Jesus. A child born in a manger because there was no place in the inn. A child whose parents came in dirty, sweaty, possibly smelling, poor. And they chose him. What if, what if Anna and Simeon in in the temple looking at what they were doing saw this couple walk in with this child and thought to themselves, it can't be them. There's no way it can be them. God would not come looking like that. God would not come in the form of a child born to parents like those. What if that? was their thought. What if the child was given less love and attention because of the situation that he was born into? What if people ignored this child because of what their his, their parents had done in the past? What if this child was forgotten? Where would we be today? Because inside the child that was born to Joseph and Mary was the ability to change people's minds. Was the ability to change people's hearts and the ability to change the world. We just had to look and see it. It was the guidance of the Holy Spirit that showed Anna and Simeon to see the child for what it was to become. Not for what it was born into. The child, born anew, fresh, filled with life, loved and seen by the world. In this time of Christmas tide, in this time of new beginning, a new year, how do we look at the world and the people? In this world. Do we look around and see potential in everyone's eyes? Or do we look around and see what they look like on the outside and immediately say, they can't do anything for me? How do we see? Do we see through the Holy Spirit? Or do we see through our own judgment? We do a great disservice to this world each and every time we see without using the Holy Spirit. We do a great disservice in this world each time we judge children and other people for things they have no control over. We do a great disservice to this world when we decide that at the beginning of life, a person has no chance to succeed. We have the ability, we have the means to go out into this world and to help the least of these. To give them every opportunity that they should have in this world, no matter who they are or where they come from. So the Holy Spirit is guiding us to be like Anna, to be like Simeon, to look at the children 
in this world and to see greatness. Not to see their parents, not to see the house they live in, the situation where they come from, how much money is in a bank account, but to see what the child can be if we help. To see the greatness that they can become. To understand that no matter where they begin their life, we can help them achieve all that God intends for them to achieve. We can see these children for what they are. And we can go out into the world and make sure that the world sees these children for what they are. For potential. For advancement. For help. For love. For caring. And not just a lost cause because of what they were born into. For in every child, in every child is this miracle of Advent that we celebrate. In every child is a new age. And in every child is a light for revelation and a glory for all people. Amen.